in the world was that thing? One moment it was human, the next it was a plant! Is everyone all right? We're fine, but can you please tell us what's going on? I... I don't understand. I take it this monster is whom I had the pleasure of meeting last time. Correct. As you might have guessed, this is a mutated whopper flower. An extremely rare kind. But... can whopper flowers turn into humans? Not typically. But conditions on Dragonspine are far from typical. Perhaps the dragon's blood seeped into the land, then was passed to the monsters via the ley lines, accelerating their rate of mutation. How could that happen? This mountain is home to the remains of Durin, the venomous dragon. If there is anywhere in the world one might expect life to do unfathomable things, it would most likely be here. Durin was an artificially created life form. Its existence is nothing short of a miracle, and proof of countless possibilities. In other words, this mountain we stand on is a cradle of life's profoundest mysteries. A vast and terrifying hotbed of possibilities. The avalanche. It must have been the work of this imposter. Agreed. All the other troubles you faced on the way down could also have been its handiwork. My guess is that it was targeting everyone that I've had contact with. Right, I forgot all about that. It's not inconceivable. But what was its purpose? Was it just trying to get rid of us? Hmm... I have a preliminary hypothesis on this. Whopper flowers are masters of mimicry, and those we encounter in the wild often appear in the vicinity of the plants they impersonate. In other words, the whopper flower likely has an instinct to replicate and replace. As a plant, it will disguise itself as another plant and infiltrate the group, hiding among them for cover. The plant being imitated has no way to detect or fight back against this behavior. But when it disguises itself as a human... It wanted to replace you and infiltrate our group? Yes. Maybe it created the avalanche to get rid of us. I predicted this eventuality, so I availed myself of the avalanche to hide and lure it out. It was watching us the whole time, and when it saw that I had disappeared, its instinct was to take my place. At that point, its disguise was complete, and its next move was to hunt its prey. Yes, that's exactly how Whopper Flowers operate. So when it approached and attacked Jewel, what was that? A trial run? Perhaps. Or maybe it enjoyed posing as a human, and wanted to experience what it felt like to be human. We're fortunate to have discovered it in time. I think the Traveler was the first person other than Albedo to notice something was wrong. Traveler, how could you tell the real me and my imposter apart? I want to know too. I had no idea the other guy was an imposter. They looked exactly the same to me. I see. It goes to show how difficult it is to impersonate a human. This mutant whopper flower tried its best to replicate the original exactly, but still managed to miss some details. Unbelievable. To think that Dragonspine creates such terrifying possibilities. Anyway, at least we won in the end. It looks like my method did work after all. <laughs> I used up all the bad luck, and the good luck finally came through! About that. If you're referring to having fallen down the mountain and avoided injury... Well, that's because I was secretly protecting you. Huh? Uh... Well, that still counts as good luck to me. <laughs> yes, that's not an unreasonable way of looking at it. <sighs> okay. We've been delayed long enough. Time to move on. Yeah! Let's go!
doesn't seem to be here. He must have headed up the mountain. Let's wait for him here. Amber, are you feeling better? Yep, all good now. Nothing to worry about. I don't know what I'd do without you guys. If not for you, I'd probably still be locked up in that cage. I really want to thank you all properly, but I can't think how at the moment. Huh? You must be pretty used to being on the receiving end of people's kindness by now, though, surely? You probably need it often enough, given your... situation. <laughs> <sighs> Come on, don't put it like that. Sure, plenty of people have shown me kindness before, but that doesn't mean I will ever take it for granted. No matter how many times people help me out in life, I will never forget any of them. Well, instead of repaying those who helped you, perhaps you could help others yourself. Everyone meets others in need from time to time. By choosing to be there for them, you're passing the kindness you received onto others. Yup, you're right. That's what I've always tried to do, and will always continue to do. <laughs> right. And when Cyrus gets back, I'll find some way to help him out too. <sighs> this has been quite an eventful day. Yeah, it has. It's really hit me how tired I am now that I've started to relax. <sighs> I need to rest. Everyone, please excuse me for a while. Yeah, I need to get some water and maybe a piece of fruit. Once I'm rested up, I need to get back to being an instructor again. <sighs> Well, it looks like the curse of the mountaineers who couldn't get off the mountain is finally broken. Feels like an action-packed chapter has come to a close. Hmm. Shall we find somewhere to rest and chat, too? Why not? Then, please, come with me. You sent something, too, didn't you? Then let's go. Huh? Are you going back to your camp again? Maybe we could talk here. Uh, okay. Might as well come with you. Good. Shall we set off right away? Sorry for bringing you back here once again. Some topics are best discussed in private. Is this about the imposter? That's right. I have to say, Traveler, I'm very surprised you noticed the difference between me and the imposter. Yes, this mark. Perhaps it's where it all began. Ooh, sounds like the beginning of a big story. Keep going! Well, I uh, can't deny that what I'm about to say does sound like something from a children's storybook. So, what do you think this diamond-shaped mark means? No. Consider it a, uh, a birthmark. Have you ever seen an intricate glass ornament and wondered how it was made? Well, one method for crafting with glass is a technique known as glass blowing. Glass blowing is not a widely known art in Tevat. For this reason, glassware made in this way is usually very expensive. As the name implies, glass blowing involves blowing air into a hole, much like blowing up a balloon. This type of glassware is known for having a pontal mark at the point where the blowpipe was inserted, where the hole was sealed at the very end. This mark is a sign that the item was crafted by a human hand. Sounds kind of amazing! It is a wondrous and beautiful art form. Alice says that these marks are seen as proof of the maker's fine handiwork, the only flaw in an otherwise perfect work of art. My mark is something similar to this. The difference between synthetic and natural life lies in the directional flow of the life force. The energy of a natural life form flows out from within. That's why flower buds bloom and curled leaves unfold. And it's the very reason we watch and wonder at blossoming flowers. Creating life artificially, on the other hand, involves, to a certain extent, the introduction of an external source of energy into the embryonic life form. When the hole where the life force was infused is sealed at the end, it leaves a mark not dissimilar to the pontal mark in blown glasswares. The alchemical substance drips and spreads out in all directions, 
resulting in this rather ingenious diamond shape. Wow! So that's where it came from! This mark is a sign of my artificial origins, and proof of my imperfection as a human. I presume that the imposter intentionally avoided replicating this mark, so as not to become less than perfect himself. You are fundamentally different from other people. I have few qualms about sharing my secrets with you. Just as Paimon said, it all sounds like a story. Even if you were to tell anyone else, they would regard it as nothing more than a tall tale. The transcendent and miraculous are not the only things to which human beings aspire. They pursue the everyday, the ordinary, to a far greater extent than I would have ever imagined. People like to believe that those who are thoroughly different from themselves could only ever exist in stories. It makes things much easier. Or, in other words, all the unfathomable things we've seen recently would make good material for a novel. I have friends who write novels. If they wrote this story, it'd probably be even more complex. Making up stories is easy. Even Paimon can do that. Oh. I didn't know you had that kind of talent. <laughs> Paimon's the best guide into that! Making up stories is a piece of cake! In that case, how about we have a storytelling contest? We can base our stories on the events of the last few days. Sounds great! Uh, but we still have to help out the Adventurers Guild. I understand. Creativity is something that cannot be rushed. Take your time, and come back when you have found some inspiration. We'll see whose story is more... compelling. Deal! Okay, we'll regroup with the Adventurers Guild for now. Sure. My story... Yes, I should have known. Master's failed specimen in the dragon's belly. This is where the story truly begins. <laughs> if we switched places, if you were the survivor, then as the abandoned experiment, the failure of the primordial human project, I'd want to replace you too. I would replicate your appearance, study your alchemy, and create miraculous life forms to divert your attention. I would wait for the right moment, then dispose of you and the Traveler, the sole person to have known your secret. And then, I could finally experience the joy of being brought into the world. <laughs>